Hello everyone, today we have a little job, courtesy of a viewer of the channel. We're here to inspect and uh, potentially repair some faulty areas of this privatized Strymgur 57 trigger housing. Purpose of the video is again to entertain and inform. Please do not take this as kind of a gunsmithing guide. I'm not a professional gunsmith. The purpose is just to have fun and to appreciate the good old fashioned uh, old school engineering behind uh, the rifle and the trigger housing. Now, the takedown has been pretty well covered by the previous video, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that. But today I can show you a couple of methods that I personally use for cleaning, because this one is uh, relatively grimy. You can see that it looks uh, like the surface of the moon inside. But what we can start with is a basic uh, visual and function check. Apart from normal wear, I don't see any obvious corrosion, dents, or cracks. The brazing seam at the back looks pretty good. Uh, sometimes these have a tendency to fail and that kind of spreads the rear of the trigger housing out. Because um, you can imagine that the hammer spring is actually resting against this area. It's even bowed out a little bit, but that's that's normal. Oh, I see an issue here. Uh, this right here is the uh, magazine catch rivet pin. You can see that it's clearly protruding on this side, which means that the riveting on this side has failed. So we'll have to re-rivet that. I can show you this in the video. Um, other than that, the trigger itself looks pretty good. The trigger works. Um, oh, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem here. The, the full auto blocking plate is a bit loose. We're gonna inspect that later with gauges uh, after cleaning, but I suspect that it's a bit, little bit on the loose side, so we'll have to tighten this back up on the vise afterwards, make sure that during cleaning, it doesn't get lost. So let's try, cock the hammer, spring feels good. Nice positive retention, safety functions. Place it on E, M, nice and crisp. You can try the first stage. Looks pretty good. Now you can see the very nice positive engagement of the sear with the hammer and then the release. Pretty good. Let's try the reset. Excellent. Check if the, the pins are retained. Yep, seems pretty good. Magazine catch and magazine catch lever seem fine. So I say we proceed with the disassembly and get to it. So here we have a third generation clip-on uh, diopter or clip-on rear sight. This one uses carbon-14 illuminating inserts with a sapphire crystal lens. Now compared to the second generation ones, these are not reversible, so they can only be used on one side. These I think were introduced roughly in the mid to late 70s and had a lifespan, impressive lifespan I think of over 20 years, which is pretty cool. Other than that. You can see there's a bit of uh, cloth stuck in there. Let's try to pry that out. Seems to be some sort of a... Uh, interesting, some sort of flannel, weapon cleaning cloth. I guess we'll leave that alone for the time being. Uh, I suppose that the owner put that in to avoid the night sight from rattling around. Let's remove the screws here. Pretty dirty. Let's move over to the vise for the actual trigger pack.
Seems pretty sandy and gritty in there. It's a good thing we took it out. Looks pretty good. Now to drive out this rivet pin right here, it's interesting to use a special de-riveting punch. The motivation here is that you're driving out directly the, the pin through the tapered portion. You're not bottoming out on the very, uh, you know, sensitive crisp edges. So right here in the case of the, uh, the magazine catch pin, this one is three millimeters and uh, 60 degrees at the tip. So let's drive that straight out. And up comes, oop, there you go, your very dirty in this case uh, magazine catch. There it is. Let's remove the trigger adjustment nut. We're going to do a trigger readjustment in the video as well. Get this right out. It seems quite worn on the edges right there. Interesting. And there's your uh, trigger box. Pretty neat. So now that we have a pile of parts, I'm going to do a little uh, pre-cleaning. So I'm just going to remove the loose dirt and grease. And we're going to dunk all this in an ultrasonic cleaning solution just to get all the crud out. Um, now heavy grease doesn't work really well uh, if you want to save time with the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's good to... Uh, uh, give this a little scrub beforehand. Let's get to it. So right here we have an older generation hammer. Uh, this particular one was uh, machined by Werkzeugfabrik Erlikon, which uh, who machined the uh, the hammer forgings. You can still see the raw forging surface finish right here versus the machine and polished faces. Um, the 392 usually is a lock code. This is necessary for heat treatment because these had a tendency to break, uh, usually in this area right here, because when the hammer is being shoved back, it strikes the uh, trigger pack in this area and this tends to create a stress concentration in this area. Um, they mitigated that with later hammers by changing the material. These usually have an SAE marking that's prominently stamped in this area right here to signify a material change and that solved a lot of the problems. Now this particular one has uh, an interesting issue. Uh, it's kind of hard to show on camera but the uh, rivet that holds the hammer stem in place is actually moving. So I can feel a bit of side to side play. This is supposed to stay in place firmly and not supposed to move. So we're gonna try and repair that um, with the riveting press. If not, then uh, I'll have to replace the entire hammer assembly because uh, this is not tolerable. It can result in excessive end play here, which uh, you know may result in breakages on the long run. So that's something to note. Here the disconnector seems to be still in the white, so it probably has never been refurbished, and the pin as well. So this is still the original pack. Uh, interestingly, I believe that Heckler & Koch, out of all uh, companies, 
actually machined uh, the disconnectors. So it's uh, it's interesting how they worked uh, for SIG building their battle rifles. Sear seems to be a standard privatized affair. You can see that the, the tail has been clearly cut off and ground over. The sear surface looks pretty good. Uh, you can see the the nice uh, lapping that has been done on the sear notch, so that should be pretty pretty um, normal. ST stands for uh, Stopani, a company based in Bern. Uh, they actually manufactured uh, these uh, these sear these sears. Actually, it's interesting. You can kind of see the, the the vice marks on the side. I suppose that this thing was clamped pretty tight in a vice and the hardened jaws kind of bit into the sear. So you can see uh, you know, how rushed the privatization can be. It's not exactly uh, the best work you can find. So now that we have the full auto blocking plate uh, wiped clean, let's give it a test. The, uh, the space between that lobe right here and basically the space, the clamping space, it should be between 125 to 1 1.4. So let's try with a, a 1.4 gauge block. You can see, ooh, that is pretty sloppy fit right here. So uh, I'm just going to tighten this real quick and see if we can correct that. Seems to be tight on one side, but still a bit. Let's try 1.3. Still passes 1.3, so I'm just going to tighten this a second round and we should be well within tolerance. Let's try again at 1.3. Good, 1.4. And 1.4 doesn't work. Let's try that again on the trigger pack, because ultimately that's the that's the proper gauge. And we're getting good solid retention right here. Excellent. So I can consider that fixed. So safety lever looks um, pretty healthy. No rotating parts, everything seems to be fixed in place. Uh, interestingly, uh, this one is made by Charles Bergonzo, uh, which actually is still in business. They made the safety lever arbors. And um, yeah, pretty interesting uh, piece of uh, Swiss industrial history right here. It's like we have a, a little bit of corrosion right here. We're gonna have to wire brush it out before I dunk it in the tank. This particular one, I'm not sure if I can uncover the subcontractor marking more clearly. It seems to be stamped by the Cura company, which is based in Geneva. They were experts in deep drawn, uh, thick sheet steel parts like this one. Pretty interesting. Mm. 
decades of dead skin cell buildup. How sexy. Reminds me of these uh, earwax cleaning videos. Equally satisfying, if I'm honest. That looks pretty nice, doesn't it? <laughs> it's definitely an improvement. This one seems to be dated uh, March 1962. I'm not sure if it'll focus on the inside. Oh, there we go. Probably made by uh, Weidmann, but hard to see through in the bottom of that pistol with cavity. All right. Looks like we have a pile of parts. Let's hop over to the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and uh, get all of these parts washed. Alright, so instead of blow drying and taking ages, I'm just going to dunk the parts in some uh, penetrating oil to chase the oil out, sorry, the water out, and to protect the parts uh, against corrosion. So here I have a little tub of this uh, special oil. Just to slosh the parts around, chase the water out. Drain these slightly right here. And then leave these out to drain for a little while. All right, so after a little oil dip, I'm just gonna give everything a wipe to remove the excess oil. And uh, just to give everything a check after everything is clean.
So it's really big. Hmm, looks like we have a problem here. You can see that the that little rivet pin right here is clearly bent. Not quite sure if this is really repairable. Uh, we'll try, but um, yeah, that's definitely a problem. We'll have to correct that. All right, looks like we are done. All the parts are clean, protected, and ready to be reassembled. Um, let's do a couple of inspections and repairs, uh, first of all. All right, so first let's check uh, the inter-ear distance, basically. So this relationship defines how much uh, rattle room or clearance the trigger housing has with the receiver. I'm going to use a, a 30 millimeter gauge block to help inspect that. We're just going to pass it through and just see how much clearance there is. So we're not too tight, that's good. I'm feeling just a little bit of binding here. Uh, quite a little bit of play. So this means that this interface right here is a little bit on the looser side. I'm just going to tighten this up on a vise real quick. be very gentle with this it's easy to overshoot I'm just going to bend this ever so slightly inwards like that check again with the gauge block and I can feel no rattle room we should be better uh, that should at least mitigate some of the uh, the clearance and play problems with the uh, trigger housing so that's taken care of so for re-riveting the magazine catch pin, I'm going to be using a Turkish DEP2 impact press uh, using a special fixture and a set of uh, riveting spikes that have been designed by myself and made uh, in Grünig und Enmigo thanks to Robert. Really fantastic job. Very, very useful tool. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to probably use a brand new pin uh, just to make sure that I have fresh extremities uh, to help get a good uh, retention of the mag catch. We don't want this coming loose. And since we have the spares, might as well use the new parts anyways. So let's reinstall that right now. Get the pin started just like this. So it barely protrudes here. Install the mag catch like this. There we go. Make sure it's in the correct, correct orientation. So basically I just need to set the, uh, the assembly right here, make sure that pin, that taper is being indexed by the bottom spike, you can feel it, and then I'm going to bring down the ram, and you can see that it is holding the rivet pin in between. I just got to make sure that for that first strike, that I'm getting equal clearance on both sides, that's important, and then give it a strike. Let's give it a check. Oh yeah, that looks really, really good. Nice and equal on both sides. Just to make sure that this is nice and uh, flared up equally, I'm just gonna give it a second strike. Make sure that this is well seated. Beautiful, look at that riveting quality right here. 
and wager it's even better than factory quality. What a fantastic tool. So yeah, that basically seats the magazine catch firmly in place. Uh, now, usually the, the, the armor's way, if you didn't have access to such a homemade fixture, would be to use a pair of these, uh, these kind of riveting tools right here, which are absolutely horrendous to use. Uh, can you imagine? You have to clamp this in a vise and then somehow balance the trigger housing in between and at the same time with your third hand, strike the top firmly with a hammer. You can understand that this is not really the most optimal solution. So having a, a fixture like this really makes things extremely repeatable and most important, gives you a really high quality result you see right here. Very, very satisfied. So, now that the mag catch is in, let's try to repair um, other elements that need a bit of attention. So to help uh, repair that loose uh, hammer pivot pin, I really don't see another way than to beat the crap out of it on the impact press until that pin no longer moves. So let's adjust the striking force a little bit more. Make sure uh, we get more energy focused on that point there. And then let's give it a try. So I'm just going to set the pin against uh, this piece of steel right here. Sandwich it here. And then fire away. Okay, it's Let's uh, try with a wrench, see if we actually improved anything. Yep, that thing is rock solid. It's not rotating at all. We completely solved the issue. Uh, since I disturbed or changed that riveted fit now, I'm just going to double check the amount of uh, end play or clearance or rattle room that the uh, hammer spring guide has. Uh, that value should be between 0.10 and uh, 0.35, so let's give it a try. So, 0.10. Yep. I can fit that in so at least we're not too tight. And let's try 0.35. Nope, not fitting anywhere. So that play is correct. So the hammer is ready for more years of service. Fantastic. Alright, so the next thing we're going to try to fix is the clearly bent uh, kind of a winter trigger stop pin. You can see that the head is clearly leaning towards the left side. And from that axis, it seems to be pretty dead straight. So the bend is really happening in this plane right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch this in the vise, and then I'm going to try to correct the bend just by, well, bending it in the other direction. Oh, pinch the device. I'm just going to push like that. That seems to have mostly fixed it. It's not perfect, but it was definitely better than before. So I'm just going to leave this alone. All right, let's reassemble. Seems to work pretty well. And drive that in. Excellent. Magazine catch and magazine catch lever are in place.
So let's uh, refine the trigger adjustment. So let's see if we even have a break point. We do not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the nut so that the spring can decompress and touch that tail of the sear sooner. So depressing that nut, backing it off a couple of turns. Let's try again. We're getting there. Honestly, this feels pretty good already, but I might back it off just another turn, or actually a sixth of a turn. Make it a tad heavier, and I think we're going to be in the ballpark. So let's test the trigger weight. Uh, now there are many factory and army methods to test the trigger, but I'm going to use the uh, sport shooting method, which is basically to measure on the uh, using the flat of the trigger guard against this nook right here of the winter trigger, and the pull weight should be uh, 2,200 grams. So let's give it a shot with this uh, trigger pull weight gauge. So I'm just going to set this right in the nook. Give it a little pull until I reach the first stage. Bing. Looks like I overshot the first stage. Let's try again. 2630. 2787. So we seem to be a little bit on the heavy side. So I'm going to back up or actually screw in one sixth of a turn to lighten that trigger just a little bit and see where that takes us. Two five oh three, two five three four. So I think we're good to go. This is a pretty good trigger weight, in my opinion. So now the trigger weight is adjusted. Let's reinstall the pistol grip. to me. Do a quick function check. Set the off first stage nice and smooth with the distinct second stage. Crisp break, hammer falls. Now I'm going to test the reset. Hammer is arrested. Reset is nice and smooth. Winter trigger full unfolds and folds back up. Nice smooth pull. Second stage. Good magazine catch, strong spring, functional. 
the takedown pin has the two years that retract. Excellent. All the springs look pretty healthy. And I think uh, we're done. There we go. The trigger housing is fully reassembled and lubricated and perfectly clean. Trigger adjusted. Blocking plate repaired. Uh, winner trigger pivot pin or stop pin repaired. Uh, hammer loose riveting repaired and the magazine catch riveting repaired. So this will return to the owner and uh, I wish him the best of luck with his rifle and many more years of service. So I hope you enjoyed this little segment and I hope you found it interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.